Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Monday evening, July 27th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the latest information. Well, during the last couple of days, we've seen two hurricanes impact the United States. This is Douglas beginning to get sheared as it moves away from the main Hawaiian Islands, where it fortunately nudged just north to allow the core to avoid uh, all of the main islands in the chain and fortunately uh, keep the m most major impacts off of the main islands, even Kauai, which was originally forecast to receive a direct hit late, and uh, it did not. So that is fortunate for them. And over in the Atlantic, uh, we do have the remnants of Hannah now spinning over northern Mexico, where unfortunately a very heavy rains and the potential for flash flooding continue to occur and have occurred over the last couple of days since Hannah made landfall over south Texas and started drifting southwest over the mountainous terrain of Mexico. The next system that we have to watch is this gigantic wave, Invest 92L, it has been dubbed in the Central Atlantic, now quickly getting to its approach uh, to the Leeward Islands here where impacts could begin as soon as Wednesday. If we take a little bit of a closer look at this, uh, this is a behemoth of a wave. Don't often see them at quite this size. The envelope of circulation here is elongated and elliptical uh, and very large. And of course, large systems tend to take some time to contract and tighten up. And uh, the tightening up is quite necessary for a tropical cyclone to form. Otherwise, it won't spin fast enough and be able to efficiently heat a small area to generate a circulation by lowering pressures with convective heating. And so we need a smaller size. How do we get a smaller size? Well, you can either concentrate thunderstorm activity in one part of this wave envelope and try to generate a tighter circulation within the larger one, or the whole thing can gradually contract. And that tends to, de uh, to depend on whether or not the large envelope is circular. At this point, it is less circular, more elliptical. That means that we're more likely to see one or both of the lobes of the ellipse become tighter instead of one giant circular thing gradually contracting. Uh, so in this case, which of the lobes is most likely to tighten? And the models have disagreed on this and have really struggled over the last few days. Uh, at the current moment, uh, we have had a little bit better definition of the southwestern end than most models expected, where most models expected the northeastern end to tighten up first. This is very typical because we have the trade winds to the north side, and so we often expect the north side to have more natural vorticity with it and spin up first. Um, but the southwest side here has had more convection of late, and it remains pretty well defined, and that's what's maintaining this elliptical tilted shape from southwest to northeast as opposed to something more circular. How is this playing out on model forecasts? Well, this is the European model, the initialization here. And uh, if we go forward a couple uh, days here, it moves very fast toward the west and by Wednesday morning is already in the midst of the leeward Antilles. And uh, this is still kind of an open wave, maybe a broad closed low on the Euro and it remains kind of elongated in a way from south southwest to north northeast. Just to show you how quickly things have been changing with this, the last few runs of the European model have been this different, all valid Wednesday morning, even just a couple of days ago, it had a much slower storm and a little bit smaller, more well-defined, more symmetric storm. But of late, uh, the wave has been moving much faster and broader on the European model. On the GFS, uh, we have sort of a similar story, except that it really elongates this and has this northern end of the wave amplifying a little bit more than the European model does. Uh, but even it has been undergoing some very stringent changes over the last several runs. And you'll note one of them is that the southwest end of the wave has become more defined over the last couple of runs, where even just two runs ago from last night, we had a more circular wave, whereas now we have a more well-defined southwestern end, as we noted on satellite imagery, and so this is now remaining elliptical for longer. And if we go several runs back, all valid Tuesday evening here, you'll see that just a couple short days ago, we had entire uh, hurricanes already developing on the model before it ever reaches the islands. This was the original forecast for the wave. We have seen now a trend toward slower development as this broad wave takes longer to contract. And a lot of it has to do with this uh, persistent 
elongation uh, because as long as it remains elongated, if either end of the wave tries to tighten up, and especially if they try to tighten up simultaneously, it really, each one is preventing the other from becoming circular. And that circular shape is very necessary for generating consistent inflow into the vortex and allowing convection to organize in a small enough space that the heating generated from those thunderstorms can really lower the surface pressure and generate a circulation that can intensify. While it's elliptical, this is more difficult, and uh, it seems like the trend is for this to take longer to happen. Now, some runs of the models have completely dropped uh, formation of this system. The European model, which originally had this as a hurricane several days ago, now fails to develop at all and instead moves the wave into the greater Antilles without a closed circulation. Uh, the GFS is a little bit uh, more well-defined with this and does eventually form some kind of storm to the north of Puerto Rico, but it does encounter some difficulties, which we'll talk about in a bit, uh, that cause it to remain weak. At this point, looking at uh, this kind of uh, wave that we have out here, it would be a little surprising to have something that is rotating this much uh, completely fail to develop. And there's still significant odds that we do see a storm come out of this envelope somewhere near the Leeward Antilles and or Puerto Rico. And odds are still pretty high, I would say, uh, that we do get a storm out of this. It doesn't necessarily mean it will be a strong one, but some kind of tropical depression or storm is probably likely near the Leeward Antilles or Puerto Rico at this time. And NHC still gives it 80% chance for that to happen. Uh, so as this comes west, though, how quickly that development happens will be very key, because once it gets to this region, Puerto Rico, Leeward Antilles, uh, we'll be talking about some conditions that are starting to get less favorable for the storm's development. Uh, if we look at the GFS model, or rather the um, European model, uh, looking farther west here as it moves past the islands, again, you can see it tracking toward the west very quickly and then ends up here with the wave axis over Jamaica and eastern Cuba and the Bahamas by Friday morning. If you look in the mid-levels, uh, you'll see that the 500 millibar wave axis is way back here over Hispaniola, and if I superimpose that with the low-level wave axis, you can see how offset they are. This implies a very tilted wave and a lot of westerly shear in this forecast. And we can see why that's the case if we look at the upper level flow on the GFS, where here the storm is passing north of the islands, and this is the upper level wind in barbs here. And you can see this upper level trough outlined in yellow color and these cyclonically flowing wind barbs in generating the southwesterly flow that is now causing shear in the vicinity of 92L, or what would be Isaias if it develops into a storm. Now, as it comes west, uh, models have shown this trough being a little bit more well-defined, but importantly, this storm is weaker. And because it's weaker, it's less able to fight the trough. Now, this is not a particularly strong upper-level trough here. It really isn't. And the way this typically works is the tropical cyclone is throwing out air aloft in outflow. And this is shown in blue color, uh, low PV values or an upper level high. And this outflow can push against upper level troughs and bully them around if those upper troughs are not too strong. And chances are, if this was a stronger hurricane like it was on prior model runs, it would be able to shove this trough out of the way. And you can actually see this happen on prior runs of the GFS, where some runs were a little bit stronger. Here we had a stronger tropical storm and you can see the outflow really putting up a wall here, trying to push this trough back. But on other runs, you can see the trough winning the battle a little bit more because there's less blue coming at it in this plot. And so really the weaker 92L is, if it becomes a storm near the Northeast Caribbean, the more susceptible it's going to be to the influence of this trough. And not only that, but we have a lot of dry air around for the shear to push into the storm once it gets to this point. So you can see that by the time it's near the Virgin Islands on this run of the GFS, you see these browns, dry relative humidities in the mid troposphere, getting pushed into this side of the storm by that southwesterly wind shear. And importantly, the elliptical shape of this storm really does not help this situation because when you have such a large wave on Envelope within which the storm is developing. If we look at how that looks in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, this would be Wednesday morning where again we have a southwestern lobe and a northeastern lobe, so this very elongated shape in the mid-troposphere. And so by the time this actually develops, it ends up throwing 
a perturbation way up to its northeast into the subtropical ridge, which here is weak. And so the northern end of the wave continues to kind of push into this weakness in the ridge, and it carries a lot of the moisture with it and kind of strains it away from the circulation instead of that moisture getting wrapped into a nice circular symmetric developing storm envelope some of it gets kind of thrown away if you will so you can kind of see this happen where a lot of this moisture gets orphaned from the circulation that really wanted to wrap that in and form an insulating bubble of moisture to protect it from all this brown dry air to its west without that moisture uh, protective bubble and the fact that the storm is weaker it's very easy for just a little bit of shear to disrupt the circulation immensely and so a lot of model runs have trended toward um, eventual uh, struggling of this system even if it avoids Hispaniola even if it stays north of the islands really not a lot of development on recent model runs European GFS UK Met HWARF all of them showing stringent weakening of 92L even if it becomes a storm coming west it has struggles. This could still change. Uh, the environment could still be modified. If we look again at the GFS upper level flow, you can see just how wildly variable these different runs have been in this upper level flow, and a lot depends on how strong 92L or future Isaias is when it moves through the islands, if it does indeed develop. So we'll be keeping a close eye on this. Uh, in addition to the track for potential impacts to the islands, we're talking about, again, a very large wave envelope. So with, you know, there's a large range of locations within which you could try to try to consolidate. So we could have a track anywhere from through the leewards to potentially north of the leewards, depending on which part becomes dominant first. Uh, so in terms of impacts, uh, Considering it's broad, likely not going to develop rapidly, so wind unlikely to be the main concern, but uh, potential flash flooding, rainfall will likely be the main story here, and especially for Puerto Rico, uh, where they are very flash flood prone. Given the size of the wave envelope, it would have to pass uh, well north of the islands to avoid uh, all impacts, so it's pretty likely at this point we'll see a bout of heavy rain in the Leeward Islands and the Greater Antilles. Going forward from that, the current consensus is that the environment will not be super favorable as this comes west, which is good news, uh, but things could still change. So as it gets into this part of the world, we'll be keeping a very close eye on it to see if things uh, are, are a little more favorable than currently expected. Uh, so we'll continue to watch this, keep an eye on the National Hurricane Center forecasts for the latest. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.